Eternal God, prepare our hearts and minds and souls to hear your word to us this morning in the reading of the Holy Scripture and in the proclamation of the good news. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Our first scripture lesson this morning is from the Old Testament, the book of Psalms. I'm reading from Psalm 86. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all the day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. And the second scripture this morning comes from the New Testament, uh, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11. You can picture this, that Jesus is with his disciples and has been praying, and then the disciples speak to him. They must be gathered closely around him. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. This is the word of the Lord. In the, in the lesson this morning in the gospel, we found the disciples with Jesus. And Jesus is praying. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to sit with Jesus at the feet of the master to experience Jesus as he is praying to God, our Heavenly Father, and realizing that at times he prayed out loud, or else we wouldn't have some of the prayers he gave in the Bible. The disciples heard them. The gospel writers wrote them down. But to sit there and hear Jesus praying to God, I can only imagine, but it must have made a powerful impact on the disciples and in that instant, they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. Today is the second Sunday of Lent, and we continue on the journey to the cross, following the theme that Pastor Rem Wren introduced last week. To grow in faith, seeking a deeper, more intimate relationship with God, using different tools or disciplines. Now last week, Pastor Wren spoke of the value of silence and solitude in, in seeking God. And she shared with me the answers that some of you gave on the survey about the Lenten season and things you wanted to learn about. And there were many comments about prayer. So that is the focus that Wren chose for us today. Prayer as a path to God. Prayer as a way to become closer and deeper to God in our faith. But what is prayer? And is there a right or wrong way to pray? And when and where should we pray? Why do we pray? Now there are many books about prayer and resource books filled with prayers for use on various occasions. 
And I have participated in many prayer groups and prayer chains and have, want to be honest that about this topic of prayer today, I have sometimes done um, Bible studies or um, groups for four to six weeks just on the topic of prayer. So understand that we're going to kind of skim the surface a little bit and try and give you an overview about it. But a conclusion that I came to in all my experience with prayer and praying with folks is that no two people pray alike. Because each one of us is unique in our own needs and concerns, our style and our words. Now the Encyclopedia of Reformed Faith states that prayer is human speech addressed to God. A simple definition, human speech addressed to God. And our Presbyterian forefather John Calvin writes that prayer is an intimate conversation with God. Prayer is putting God at the center of our deepest concerns. And in prayer through the Holy Spirit, people, people seek after and are found by the one true God who has been revealed in Jesus Christ. So why do we pray? If God is all powerful, does God know all our thoughts even before we say them? So is prayer superfluous? Is it necessary? But prayer is necessary because it is the chief part of praising and giving thanks to God. Prayer is a significant, extremely important piece of worship. Check the Book of Order of the Presbyterian Church and it goes to great length about prayer and what it means to have prayer in worship and in our lives. And I think all of our prayers should come from a sense of the gratitude that we have to God, along with the expression of our needs and our concerns. I think that prayer is our personal connection and lifeline to God. For me, prayer is my connection to God, and it's very personal. I am always aware of God's presence and awed by the glory of God's creation, of life and all that we have. But it is in prayer that I can share my fears and confess my sins and know that God is listening to every word and will guide me on my journey. Prayer is a connection to the grace of God. Does prayer make any difference in our lives, in our world? If you read publications, uh, one of my favorites is Guidepost magazine, uh, a lovely little magazine started by uh, Reverend Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. And there are many stories in there about prayer and how it affects people, gets them through crises, and even stories of some miracles of prayer. In my experience, I have seen many wonders of prayer when praying with folks who are sick or mourning or struggling with life. And I'm sure many of you could share a personal story about how prayer helped you through a difficult situation. Maybe even a small miracle occurred. And I hope that you will share those stories with one another. Perhaps something that can be done in the study groups this week to talk about the prayers and how they have helped you. And that may help others to find ways to, new ways to pray. Now I have been asked this question many times, how should I pray? Well, there is no right or wrong way to pray. I'm gonna emphasize that. There is no right or wrong way to pray. It is simply praying from your heart be yourself in prayer, just as you would confide in your best friend. Can you think of God and Jesus as your best friends, your BFF, and you can pray to God, 
talk with God in the same confidence that you talk to a, a trusted friend. Our prayers do not have to be as eloquent as Billy Graham or Mother Teresa. Our prayer should simply be our own words expressing gratitude and our needs and with confidence that God is listening and will hear our prayers. But when and where should we pray? Anytime, anywhere, any place. No limits on prayer. Anytime, anywhere, any place. Remember the words from the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. The part about pray without ceasing is tough. How can you do that in your busy life? But there's some thought that your whole life can be a prayer. Everything you do, whether it's at church or washing the dishes or, or going to work, everything in your life can be a prayer lifted up to God if you are living your life with God in the center and trying to do everything in your life to honor and please God. Now the practice of prayer is absolutely universal. And there seems to be a basic drive in humanity to reach out to something beyond us, to a higher power. No culture has ever been uncovered or discovered that did not reveal some expression of prayer. Think of our Hebrew ancestors in the Old Testament. Abraham, Moses, the kings of Israel, David, they all prayed. And the prophets, Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, filled with prayers. And the book of Psalms is one of the highest levels of prayer in the Bible. The wonderful words of praise and reassurance that we heard in our Old Testament lesson this morning. The Psalms can be an entry into prayer. There are 150 Psalms, and if you were to read one each day and then use that to continue your prayers, it could be a great tool for you. But Psalm 86 is one that I turn to often. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble, I call on you, for you will answer me. Those words help me that when I pray, I know God is listening to me and what I need to share with God. Now in the Gospels of the New Testament, we know there are many examples of Jesus praying. Jesus often went off alone to pray. And Luke tells us that Jesus spent the whole night on a mountain praying before he called his 12 disciples. Jesus prayed when he was baptized, when he fed the 5,000, when he healed people, and when he raised Lazarus from the dead. And following the Last Supper in John chapter 17 is a long prayer. And it's to me one of the most beloved scriptures for me. Because Jesus is praying for himself to God. Then he prays for the disciples. And near the end of this prayer, he prays for all future believers, for all people who will come to believe in Jesus. That's 2,000 years ago. And that prayer was for every person in the future, including you and me, that Jesus is praying for us. And I believe with all my heart that Jesus is continuing to pray for us. Now, in the reading from Luke today, Jesus was praying with the disciples when they asked him to teach them how to pray. They must have been truly moved what, by whatever prayers he was offering up. They, they probably said, we want to pray like you. Help us. Help us. We don't know how to pray. And Jesus responded to the disciples with the words that have become the most universal prayer in the world, the Lord's Prayer. 
Now, the prayer that we pray every week in worship together is a little different than the text that comes from the Bible. Several lines were added to the end of that prayer. But this prayer is so unique, the Lord's Prayer. Think about it, because those words that we say, our Father, are from Jesus' mouth, direct from Jesus to us to pray that prayer. That's why we do it every simple week. And think about how simple that prayer is. It's short and to the point, kind of covers everything. And it's heartfelt and it speaks straight to God, our Father. Now, there is no formula to prayer. It is simply a conversation with God. Can you, can you, is that how you pray? Or do you feel held back that God is God and I'm this little me and there should be something special or a certain way to pray? But I say it again, it is just talking with God just as you would talk with one another, the person that you trust. Because you talk to your parent, for example, who loves you, and in the same way God loves you, and God is your heavenly parent, will listen to your prayers. But do you struggle with prayer, feeling you don't have the right words? A couple things you can try. I mentioned you can try reading a psalm, and then using that to go on for a prayer. Also, it helps to pray the Lord's Prayer, get you into the mode of prayer, and then go on with your, your praises and your thanks and your needs. Um, some people use a prayer, a book of already written prayers by someone or, or, or the church, and use that as a starting point. But do you have difficulty finding the time to pray? Now this message is for Austin. You see, I saw a sign on a church, you know, those billboards they have, and it says, if you are too busy for prayer, you are too busy. And I agree with that. We have busy lives. I do too. I may be retired, but I don't know. I seem to be more busy. But always busy, things to do, to-do lists, and I have to do this, I have to do that. But can you not find 10 or 15 minutes a day to devote to God in prayer? Set, set a little goal, 10 minutes, and maybe you can increase it over time. But a lot of things to try and help you with that. Um, it's good to set a specific time to pray so that it will become a habit. It's like brushing your teeth. Don't you brush your teeth morning and night? I mean, most days. And it's, you just do it, right? You just do it. So if you find a time that'll work for you, you just kind of set that into your schedule. If you have to, put it into your iPhone and set an alarm that's going to say, you know, buzz me at 6.10 in the morning, and that's when I'm going to say my 10 minutes of prayers before I get up, something like that. It's helpful if you have a quiet place to pray without, without distractions. But on the other hand, make it work for you that you can pray anywhere, anywhere that'll work. You know, some per folks prefer early morning before the day gets too busy, and others prefer to do it as a way to close out their day. Some squeeze prayer into their breaks at work. Uh, take 10 minutes out of the lunch hour. Or if you have an afternoon break, go outside and look at God's creation and find 10 minutes to walk around and, and say a prayer. Now, I have my prayer practice is mostly when I walk my dog. So when I'm out walking the dog, I see a lot of people have on their headphones, you know, and they're jogging and walking and they're in a fog. Well, I put that, those headphones away and I walk just the dog, and we walk usually a half hour in the morning and 20 minutes in the afternoon. And a good part of that I use for prayer. That's a luxury for me, because I have the dog and I'm outside, but that's, that's what I've done. It's like clockwork for me. I have to walk the dog twice a day. It's a habit.
It's like brushing my teeth, walk the dog, let's talk to God. And I'm just walking down the street, chatting away. People may wonder, who is she talking to? Because I sometimes pray, I do it out loud. I kind of like doing it that way, you know? But do you exercise? Let go of the headphones, and when you're jogging or on the treadmill, you can pray. It works. Prayer lists are a helpful tool also. I keep a prayer list in a small notebook with a pretty cover. I keep it on my desk, and it's there so it reminds me each day to kind of look that over and keep those in, in my daily prayers. Um, it helps, too, if you're a person that's really on the go and you might find a few minutes, you take the kids somewhere and you have to, to wait, you're in the car for five minutes, ten minutes, um, have a little pocket list. You can put it in your pocket, you can put it in your purse, um, you can pull it out and pray then, five minutes, ten minutes. I challenge you to find the five or ten or fifteen minutes in your day. I'm sure you can do it. How much time do you waste in a day? Think about that. And I'm not going to put you on the spot, but there's got to be 10 minutes in there that you can devote to this important task of prayer to God. Now, I must add to, add to this that a very significant part of prayer is listening. Last week, Wren spoke about silence and solitude. And if you were not here due to the extreme weather, which I, I admit I stayed home last week, um, I wanted to be here, um, I did listen to the message on the website. And an aside, I wanted to compliment whoever has redone the website. It's great. There's just a lot of information on it and a wonderful option now that you can find, get the sermon on the website. So I listened to it on the website. And reiterating what she said about quiet and silence. Because prayer with God is a two-way street, okay? It's not just sending out your prayers. You have to stop and listen for God to respond to you. Pray and then be still and listen. That takes even more discipline than trying to find those 10 minutes to pray. Um, it's difficult to quiet everything in your head and allow God to speak to you in some way. Um, and we're all different in how that works. Um, God speaks to me in a certain way. Um, sometimes God speaks through other people. You may not exactly hear what it is you need right away, but later on, someone else will speak to you and you say, oh, that's what I think I'm supposed to do. And in the silence for a few minutes after your prayer, you've got to block out the world and the to-do list. You've got to focus on God, kind of like in meditation. And allow God's love and spirit to move within you, to guide you to understand God's will for you. Dr. William McGill, who's the former president of Columbia University, wrote that the value of persistent prayer is not that God will hear us, but that we will finally hear God. Prayer can be powerful. I think we all know that. And your prayer for someone else or even for yourself can make a big difference. And sometimes when you pray for others and a lot of people that you put on your list and particularly when you pray for your enemies, remember that in there, Jesus said pray for your enemies. It will change perhaps not the other person, but it will surely change you by lifting up those prayers for all those different people, even your enemies. But a hard question that comes when we talk about prayer, is what about unanswered prayer? And I have been asked that question too many times. Someone comes to me and says, I've prayed and God never answers me and I asked for healing, but my loved one 
passed away? That's a question I really can't answer. Only God can answer such a question. But I do know sometimes that if it seems God is saying no to your petition, it doesn't mean that God doesn't love you or it doesn't mean God hasn't heard what you have said or what is concerning you, troubling you. God's no is not like a rejection, but perhaps a redirection, that God has something else planned and we need patience to listen to what God is calling us to do. Something else will come along. And unanswered prayers definitely test our faith. But our faith is indeed always a mystery. But we can always trust and believe that beyond this earthly realm, because that's where we live and think and pray, beyond this earthly realm, remember, is God's heavenly eternal realm. And that is something we strive toward. So I hope this week you will take time to look at this um, insert that Ren and I prepared, like I have it here, that talks about grow deeper prayer. There are some verses and quotes that are interesting and inspiring, and a list of resources, um, including some so websites that you can subscribe to. Uh, most of them are free, and uh, if you sign up, they will send you a daily devotion and prayer every day. Uh, it's one another thing that I do when I turn on the computer. Um, I have something that comes from guideposts. It's like a prayer of the day um, that I find really helpful to me. And I think um, there might even be a prayer app for the smartphones. Anybody know about that? Yes, somebody's, oh, they're shaking their head. See these ladies over here, if that's of interest to you. Um, but there's lots of ways, there's lots of opportunities. Now the suggestion for this week, it's, it's on the handout, it's called Try It This Week. Um, if you look at it, it's, um, um, it's called the ACTS, A-C-T-S, ACTS Model of Prayer. And um, this is something you can do at home. Uh, ACTS, A-C-T-S, is a way to remember four key elements of prayer. It's an acronym for adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. So adoration, of course, means worshiping. Begin your time of prayer by adoring and praising God. And then there's confession to express your uh, concerns um, for things you have not done, that you're wanting to change and ask God to forgive you, believing that God will forgive you. Then there's thanksgiving, to thank God for everything that you can possibly think of in your life. Thank Jesus for dying on the cross for you. Thank the Holy Spirit for indwelling in you. And the last is supplication, which we also would refer to as petitions or prayer concerns. And that means praying for your own needs and those of others, your friends and family, your, your pastor, for the world. And you may want to ask God for things such as guidance and wisdom and how to know what God wants you to do. So this morning, during our prayer time, we are going to use this model of prayer. I'll explain when we get there. But my prayer for all of you this morning is that you will make time this week to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with God and with Jesus, just as you would with an earthly best friend. Because God loves you and is waiting to hear from you. And in the silence that follows your prayer, may you know God's grace and peace deep within your soul. Amen.